All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us here. Brandon Rimes, Consumer Quarterback Show. Uh, we've got Cindy Barca coming up in just a moment. She's in studio with us here at your service estate sales right here in Pinellas County. And uh, we're going to talk with her about some of her recent success stories and helping folks with their estate sales and more coming up. Uh, plus, we're going to dive into a little bit about this story about rising rents. Uh, we're a crisis for tenants and a gift for Starwood. Uh, so it's an investment firm that owns 115,000 apartments. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons and what we're seeing in there and how this affects uh, the overall economy. Uh, before we do, we like to feature our real estate listings live on air. We always like to help our sellers profit more and sell faster, utilizing our innovations with radio, TV, and internet marketing. Uh, we got a hot listing here. This is a development deal. So attention, my builders and developers out there. 9031 122nd Avenue. Uh, this is a property that's in Tampa. It's over by USF, uh, right off of Fowler Avenue and I-75. $3.9 million asking price here uh, for a great location. Some awesome dirt here available at 9031 122nd Avenue. Got 15.56 acres right on Fowler Avenue, I-75. Great visibility. I'm getting calls on assisted living facilities. Uh, we're looking at some apartment buildings. And also, I had someone call me about a uh, pickleball uh, facility. So, it's interesting. Pickleball Park. So, pickleball is big out there. I've played a few games of that, and it's kind of funny. Or kind of fun and addicting. Uh, let's look at another property here. I want to show you one over on the beach. This one's 16400 Gulf Boulevard, North Reddington, Pinellas County. Beautiful property. I'm actually surprised this listing's still around. Just over $300,000 for your beachfront condo. 16400 Gulf Boulevard, North Reddington. Uh, look at that beautiful view uh, with the pool overlooking the beach. 400 square foot condo, oceanfront property, great opportunity, would be a great uh, rental as well. Uh, 16400 Gulf Boulevard, North Reddington Beach. You can see all of our real estate listings at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. All right, Cindy, welcome into the studio. How are you today? Just fine. Excellent. Thanks for coming in and tell us a little bit more about your business. Um, well, I've been in this business for 10 years. Okay. Um, I do estate sales for people, but also I've done moving sales for people. Sometimes people just need to downsize. So um, every sale is different. I enjoy the customer service aspect of it. I've always been in customer service. Um, so my job, I look at it as I'm coming in to help someone. They have a need. Yes. And it's overwhelming when yeah. people first try to tackle a mountain of personal items that you've accumulated over a lifetime right they just kind of freeze and i understand and you've got emotional attachments to it also right. if it's a family member or if it's your things you know right i i had the same thing i had to sell my things recently so yeah um to me it's a customer servicing and i i always get good feedback yep um i go in the way I do it is I'll go in and meet with the people because every situation is different. Right. Go in and meet with them and say, what's our goal? What's our timeline? Right. What's our, you know, what are our options here? And but usually when I meet them the first time, we come up with the plan. I say, we're going to do this, 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 this. And I say, just give me the key. Don't worry about it. When we're done, I'm going to give you a bunch of money. There you it, go. The stuff will be gone. I love it. I love it. And, uh, yeah, I think it, no matter what business you're in, you're in the people business. So that's the number one thing is, is you know, appealing to uh, the human side of people, especially in such a trying time in a state yes. sale. Uh, for those that may not know, it means, it means someone in the family had passed away. And, and now that you have this estate, which is, you know, the, the, the real estate, but also uh, the, you know, the, all of the personal belongings inside the home, Cindy. That's right. And usually then they'll, they'll be, it's, it's a, part of the puzzle because then they're going to list the house for sale right and you know it's just you have to move from one thing to the next that's right um but yeah i i sit down with them and like i said we get good feedback um they're always happy when we're done yeah yeah that's awesome and so you, you mentioned that keyword customer service right i mean that's such a key point today especially with you know the the advent of the internet and online reviews and you know how our human psyche is it's like when people have a bad experience they're going to go and tell 20 people they have a great wonderful experience that you might be lucky to get an online you know give me a five-star review you know so they're going to tell right. less people about the positive stuff than they do uh, the right. negative and so we really... get our business from referrals right we have people either that come to our sale or i'll have people call me 
you, you know, five years ago, you did a sale for my sister-in-law. Da, 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 da. She yeah. gave me your name. That's awesome. So that's how you get referrals um, because they are happy with what happened or they come to a sale and they, you know, they might not be familiar with how all this works. And they say, can I have your card? Can I call you? Yeah. You know, sure. So you set up the house, you set up the, the patio or the screen room, lanai, wherever. You set it up and you kind of put tables out and you got all the different stuff out. And Martin, you put pricing on yes, it, etc. Yes, yes. Yep. Organizing is one of my favorite things in life. I go oh, cool. in, I can go into a place and if all I see is boxes from floor to ceiling, it's like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's funny. like, okay, let me have at this because yeah. we need to find it a new home. Yeah. Let's march it out the door. Yeah. And uh, so that, yeah, that's one of my favorite. Once I get in there, that's one of my favorite parts. And by the time I'm done, I feel like I've known that person, you yeah. know. And right. then I, I can even share with the family. Oh, guess what I found, or you know, you know about this, whatever. So yeah, um, it's it's a relationship. By the time you're done, you know, you have new friends. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of our real estate clients have turned into Same friends way. as well. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, if you just joined us, we're talking with Cindy uh, Barca uh, at your service, Estate Sales. She is a local area business owner and uh, first time appearing on the show here. And we like to highlight local area businesses. And, you know, we ask, we ask you to, uh, you know, support the local economy by supporting the, the uh, companies that we bring on the show. So greatly appreciate you going to ConsumerQB.com. Give us a call. Shoot an email over as brimes at kw.com as well. You can do that, brimes at kw.com. And Cindy, tell us a, a recent success story or something kind of, you know, an interesting, something that well. maybe <laughs> sticks out in your mind. You probably have some funny situations well, that come up. I, I do. Um, oh, gosh. I had a retired teacher who was the cat lady. Oh. And uh, I won't use the word hoarder, but this house was packed. Yeah. She's one of those people that you, if you're sitting there day after day, you just don't even notice it anymore. Right. And in her case, she had litter boxes through the house. And I walked in and kind of held my nose and said, well, after a few minutes, I said, well, before we do anything, we need to square this situation away. Yeah, exactly. So we did. She actually opened the window in the front and just tossed the litter box out the window. I said, well, that's one way. <laughs> she had one room that she called her greenhouse that animals had gotten into over the winter and just lived it up. And wow. it was it was horrible. Oh, and I have some helpers. But I don't have them do anything that I won't do. So we all got gloves and masks and trash bags. Had to use shovels to dig it out because wow. eventually she was going to be selling this house too. Yeah. And she says, well, I really need this done. It's like, fine, you know, we'll do this. So we tackled that, and then I tackled the inside. She had one bedroom that was just uh, fabric and craft items, any fabric and craft item you could want. Wow. And, of course, being a teacher, she had books and just everything. And she was actually moving, so finally, you know, I said, "Okay, let's let's just do this." Yeah. And we went in, and and you know, gave her some money at the end, and the house was empty. Wow. So uh, a, another one that was recently was a best friend from one of my best friends from high school. Her brother, the brother's wife, had passed. They had Scottish Terrier dogs, hmm. black Scotty dogs, and for the last fifteen years, they had spent every weekend going to flea markets, auctions thrift stores, anything with a Scotty dog on it, they bought it. <laughs> I mean, they had multiples of multiples of multiples. Wow. He had thousands of figurines, yeah, dishware, you name it. If there was a Scotty dog on it, you know, bookends, doorstops, you name wow. it. Wow. And so he called me and said, you know, this is what I've got. And it was one of the biggest collections I'd ever tackled. So I spent all winter um, starting off with the first, the nice dish sets, through eBay, through Facebook Marketplace, mm. you know, everything to kind of get it started. He also had big uh, display cabinets all through the house. Every corner, every wall was a display cabinet. Yeah. So those were something it was easier to sell some of those ahead of time. So by the time we got down to our three-day sale, yeah, it was manageable. There was still lots there. Wow. But I had already made him, I just kept sending him checks through the winter. Yeah. You know, with an itemized listing, here's what we sold, here's what we sold. And uh, so, you know, we did it. And finally, the last that last day of the sale, a neighbor of his that had come around a few times said, can I make him an offer for what's left? I said, sure, let's talk. Wow. You know, and that's happened a couple times. That's happened before the sale has started. Kind of like a bulk offer. I've had offer. a dealer come in. Right. And say, you know, I want this stuff. I'm 
let's talk. Yeah. You know, and so I go to the owner who's usually still there because we haven't even started yet. Is this a number okay? Yeah, okay. Well, I just got a couple days off. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> here, you, here you are. Here's some boxes. Have at it. That's awesome. So That's that, hap- that happens sometimes. But I like, I like the fact that you said you mentioned eBay and Facebook, so you're doing online marketing with some of these unique items. Well, that... yes, because every place is different. Um, yeah. I've recently gotten more into Mercari. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes you have people with nice wardrobes. The tags are still on those wow. things, and you don't want to throw those at one dollar or three dollars a piece at you know right i get the most i tell her but i get the most out of them because a lot of your job is about valuation right yeah yeah putting the right tag appraising it properly right and making sure that nothing that's real valuable gets past us right and i don't i've never heard stories where it has right because i i i feel like i touch every item before it starts right well that's great that's a good way to do it all right cindy barca here on the consumer quarterback show at your service estate sales uh, we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back also more with cindy uh, plus our feel good story of the day we got a feel good story that is a good one it's a new york couple they open up their home to 10 korean tourists that were stuck in the blizzard find about uh, find out more about this that happened up in new york uh, and more with Cindy coming up on the other side of this break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey, this is Grant Cardone, and you've been listening to the phenomenal Brandon Rhymes, the Consumer Quarterback Show. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-917-1894. Online at ConsumerQB.com. All right, we're back. Brandon Rhymes, Consumer Quarterback Show. We always like to feature our listings live on air. we got a feel-good story coming up also. Uh, but we've got a hot property listing here at 18735 Rogerland Road. We just had a price reduction on this property as well. Rogerland Road in beautiful Spring Hill. Bring your boats, your RVs, all of your uh, equipment that you want to store. you got over an acre of land at this beautifully remodeled home. Four bedrooms, three baths, almost 1,700 square feet, no HOA. And you do have a mother-in-law suite here as well. Uh, new roof, AC, washer, dryer, electric water heater, cabinets, granite countertops. Completely renovated and updated property at 18735 Rogerland Road in beautiful Spring Hill. That's Pasco County. Great opportunity to own real estate here in Tampa Bay. Uh, 1618 West Daly on Street. This is one of my favorites right here in South Tampa. Hyde Park. You got the walkability to downtown. All the restaurants, bars, and shops right there. You got three bedrooms, three and a half bath, almost 2,300 square feet. Multi-story townhome. You got large bedrooms, vaulted ceiling, stainless steel appliances, private balconies, two-car garage. And, you, you know, the best part is this walkability factor. You can walk down to local bars, restaurants, and shops right there in the Hyde Park District of Tampa. And, of course, close proximity to downtown Tampa, 1618 West De Leon Street in Tampa. You can see all of our real estate listings at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. Bye, Dirk. Find the one you can't live without. Got a lot of vacant land listings as well. You can buy dirt from us as well. we got a dozen or so vacant land listings out there. Time for our feel-good story of the day. All right, it's got a New York couple that opens their home up. And a a couple in upstate New York opened their home to 10 Korean tourists after their bus got stuck in the snow. A bus carrying 10 tourists got stuck in the snow near Buffalo. Uh, The group of tourists were making their way to Niagara Falls from Washington, D.C. when they found themselves in the middle of a blizzard. Two men in the group decided to knock on the door of a nearby home and ask for shovels. Their plan was to dig the bus out and keep moving. Instead, they ended up with a warm place to stay until they could be picked up after the storm cleared, the New York Times reported. Alexander Campagna and his wife provided couches, sleeping bags, air mattresses, a separate bedroom for their unexpected guests. The group spent two days swapping stories and cooking with their host. They watched NFL games and made several meals together. There you have it, our feel-good story of the day. I always love that, and that's a good story. I heard about another one, too. I saw, I believe it was on Fox, where... Uh, this guy ended up breaking into a school. He had like 12 or so people. Some of them were, were uh, senior citizens, and he, he left a note. He said, sorry for breaking into the school. Did you see that? Too, I Cindy? did. Yeah, sorry for breaking in, but we were going to die if we stayed outside and we couldn't get in anywhere. And uh, I guess they knocked on a bunch of doors, and they got a bunch of no's. <laughs> so they yeah. went to the school or something like that. But, uh, yeah, life and death uh, situations happen, and, uh, and that's an interesting story out of uh, New York, uh, Buffalo area, New York. Um, so we got Cindy Barca on the show uh, at your service estate sales. Uh, I want to touch on this article I kind of teased earlier, but the rents are rising uh, in, in, 
around Tampa Bay and, of course, beyond. Uh, there's an investment firm that was highlighted uh, in this Washington Post story. Uh, they, this group owns 115,000 apartments and has raised rents 30 percent or more at some complexes. And, you know, for tenants across the country, the huge rent hikes of recent years have been a huge burden. You know, people are hurting. The economy's down and, of course, inflation's up. Everything costs more. And, and of course, you know, there's some challenges there in the insurance space. So when the insurances go up, of course, you know, that's going to raise the mortgage payments uh, for these investors. Uh, but some interesting uh, numbers here. Uh, if you look at this, this um, private investment firm, it's the largest in America, they're saying, as far as a landlord. Uh, amid a flurry of sales over the past decade, when more than $1 trillion dollars of apartment buildings changed hands over the past decade. Private investors and real estate trusts went on a binge. The proportion of apartments sold to them rose from 44% in 2011 to 70% in 2022, according to data and research. Um, so when you look at these same firms, they, their rents increased. They wrote historic waves of rent hikes to big profits also. So, you know, that's the question behind the scenes is, okay, are, they, are the rents rising because they have to? Uh, because of insurance increases and, and you know, things like uh, we saw down in Miami uh, with the condo collapse and different uh, issues, hurricanes, uh, things of that nature. Uh, but or is it greed? Is it corporate greed and investors, you know, taking in a bunch of money? But, you know, private investment firm led by Florida billionaire Barry Sternlicht, uh, Starwood has been one of the most active acquirers of apartments for a model in a model for the industry. Over the past seven years, it has amassed a portfolio of 115,000 apartments, uh, which by some rankings as the nation's largest such collections. Uh, so, yeah, it goes on to say this article gets kind of interesting. Some rents were raised as much as 52 percent in 2022. That's in Palm Beach County. Uh, some of them 35% of the same period. Uh, Boynton Beach boosted its rents by as much as 93% in 2022. Uh, so there's one, you know, of course, a lot of people are hit hard. There's this one gentleman, Robert uh, Passaretti, 35, a restaurant server, said his rent at Starwoods Reserve in Ashley Lake in Boynton Beach rose from $1,350 monthly to $2,050. Uh, so it went up $700. He's thinking about leaving the state. There's several other stories in this article uh, about that. But, yep, so that's all the more reason to be a homeowner, own your own dirt, own your own land, build build if you have to. Uh, but, you know, we can definitely help you do that, of course, here in Tampa Bay and beyond. Keller Williams, we have a nationwide network, and we can help you in other states. Matter of fact, we got a $9 million co-listing going on up in uh, North Carolina and some other big deals happening out of state as well. So we can help you with that. All right, we got Cindy Barca in the house, Cindy. So, uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of an overview on the estate sale business. What's the difference between your company and some other companies? Okay. Um, well, there is a difference. And I, on weekends, if I don't have a sale, I'm usually going to sales. So I kind of slither in and see what it is I can use. And I, <laughs> and I hang out near the checkout table and pick up pointers and all kinds of things. Um, ours, I charge to do it that's one of the first things people ask okay. i just charge a straight percentage okay so if i spend money on advertising if i spend money on my helpers uh whatever it takes that's not charged to the customer okay i take that comes out of my profit right um some estate sale companies when you you call and ask ask them how they do it they first say well how much do you have because they have a a Threshold. Kind of a minimum. You know, unless yeah. unless they're going to make a whole bunch of money, they can't be bothered with it. Right. Um, I've, I've never done that. In fact, I've found that when you first walk through someplace, there's a lot more there than you first see, mm -hmm. no matter what. It might not look – because a couple of times I've walked through, I'm like, well, there's not too much here. By the time you take everything out of the closet and everything, you know, yeah. off the shelf, out of the cabinets, yeah. there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter to me whether it's a – you know, really nice fancy house, or it's like the cat, the cat lady whose house wasn't fancy at all. Um, I'll go, I'll go in and do it, and I, the, I'm not saying, you know, I need, you need this so much, you know, minimal for me to do your sale. Yeah. And the ones that I've enjoyed the most were the ones that said, oh, three other people said they couldn't be bothered with it. And I'm like, that's fine, I'll do it. Wow. Yeah. I get it. I get it. That's uh, so you definitely you know have a have a unique company here. I love how the, how you utilize eBay when you need to, uh, and you know the process sounds like it's a you know it's a you know customer friendly uh, process when you're working with that. Um, 
And then you also, I imagine sometimes if stuff doesn't sell, are you able to donate some of those things out? Yeah, and that's one of the other things everybody asks, usually at the first meeting, is what happens with what's left. Mm -hmm. And I usually will turn it back to them and say, well, do you have a church or a charity that you want to contact to see if they want it first? Mm -hmm. But otherwise, there are companies that will pick it up. Um, I can get a crew together to come and just take it away yeah. if they don't care what happens to it at the end. And usually by the end of the sale, to me, it's like a carcass. Right. Yeah, what's left <laughs> it's over. It's picked over. Yeah. And the things that are of value to other people are gone. And right. what's left is not, you know, it's not really worth too much. Yeah. But I can get people to come and take it out. I can help, you know, make calls to get it out. But one way or the other, we can clear it out. You know, one of the things when I was a kid, we would go out and we'd collect like baseball cards, basketball. Oh. I remember like all the different brands and all that. Yeah. And then you had the Beckett. And you take the Beckett and you're supposed to, you know, say, oh, well, this card's worth X dollars or X, yeah. you know. Uh, do, do you see yeah. basketball, baseball cards, football cards getting any kind of return these days? Um, or? Well, not really. Um, the ones before, I guess, the 90s are the ones that are more valuable. Yeah. From 90 on, they started mass producing them. Right. Because I actually bought a property that had 30,000 baseball cards in the attic. You hear these stories. Oh, yeah. And got all excited, baseball, football cards, but most of them were from 90s on. Yeah. So I have, I have yet to find that one that's, you know, really valuable. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you can, I've got, I got people that um, deal in record albums. Cool. Sometimes there are LPs that are valuable, and you just can't tell that, you know. So if it's a specific thing, if they've got watches or artwork, I can contact somebody if it's not something that I know about or I don't feel comfortable, then I'll contact somebody and get their input. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah. how, how do you want folks to connect with you, Cindy? Um, they can send me an email okay. at yourservice.cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, at gmail.com. Okay. Or they can call me, 937-602-5291. Okay. Or they can shoot me a text. Okay. And Give I that voice, number again, 937. 937-602-5291. Uh -huh. Okay. Awesome. Or they can even shoot me a text and say, you know, this is it. Or if it's a longer story, send me an email. Yeah. I'll Perfect. get back to them. Cindy Barca, at your service estate sales. Thanks so much. Appreciate okay. you coming in. No problem. And we want you to please go out there and consider committing a random act of kindness. Do something kind for one another. Be a force for good in the community. And we'll see you next time right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show, ConsumerQB.com. You've been listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Whether it's real estate, consumer, or financial advice, let Brandon call your next play. Call Brandon Rhymes at 813-917-8. That's 813-917-1894. Online at ConsumerQB.com. And join us next time for the Consumer Quarterback Show.